Thanks for tuning in. I'm Rebecca Wayman from UC Davis, and I'll be speaking today about a disturbance interaction that's relatively new for those of us in the Sierra Nevada, and that is severe drought and bark beetle induced tree mortality followed by wildfire. While you look at this slide showing the progression of tree mortality in the Sierra Nevada from 2014 to 2016, I'll introduce you to the conditions that led up to these dis severe disturbance events. Middle elevations of the Sierra Nevada generally have very dense forest conditions compared to prior to Euro-American settlement due to over a century of fire suppression policies and the cessation of Native American burning practices. And California experienced an extremely severe drought between 2012 and 2016. So this hot drought combined with these dense forest conditions put trees under severe water stress. That reduced tree defenses and led to bark beetle epidemics with multiple conifer species hosts. And in California, around 150 million trees died with tree mortality concentrated in the central and southern Sierra Nevada. And most of the mortality in the Sierras occurred in 2015 and 2016. This map illustrates how quickly it happened. And now the mortality has slowed, but it is still ongoing. Now, because the magnitude of the recent tree mortality is new for the Sierra Nevada, it provides an opportunity for us to ask a question. Does recent tree mortality influence wildfire severity in a frequent fire forest? So many studies have, to date have found only limited evidence of a synergistic relationship between pre-fire tree mortality and subsequent wildfire severity. But nearly all of the research has been conducted in more mesic forests that have historically experienced infrequent high severity fire in contrast with our study system that likely had a mean fire return interval of 10 to 20 years prior to Euro-American settlement. So the frequent fire part of the question is a crucial difference from previous research and that's why I was excited to conduct this study. We might expect pre-fire tree mortality to affect fire severity more dramatically in our forests that are adapted to infrequent low severity fire. And also increases in fire severity in forests not adapted to large patches of high severity might have more serious consequences for ecosystem recovery. So we think it's really important that we develop a better understanding of what's going on with these interacting disturbances in forests that were historically experiencing frequent fire. So we collected plot data one year post fire in the footprints of two large wildfires, the 2015 Rough Fire and the 2016 Cedar Fire in the Southern Sierra Nevada. And these are mid-elevation mixed conifer systems with overstory trees that include ponderosa pine, white fir, incense cedar, Jeffrey pine, sugar pine, and California black oak. Here's an aerial view of one of our study sites that should give you an idea of the severity and spatial arrangement of the tree mortality. This image was taken about a month pre-fire and you can see that there are areas without much tree mortality and then areas where it's pretty severe but still interspersed with live trees. Um, also note that the uh, fires occurred during the red phase of tree mortality. So early and ongoing during the tree mortality event. So the dead needles are still retained on the branches in the tree canopy. So to answer our study question, we collected field data on fire severity, forest composition and structure, understory vegetation and topography on 180 plots in these two fires. We also determined the cause and timing of tree mortality for each tree. In other words, we determined whether it was alive or dead at the time of fire, and if the tree was alive, whether it was subsequently killed by fire. So on to the results. Um, I first conducted a random forest analysis to identify variables that are potentially important predictors of fire severity. We had three fire severity metrics here on the y-axis and two fires. And the fire severity metrics that we analyzed are the percent of plot basal area killed by fire. So the percent of tree basal area in a plot um, of trees killed by fire. RDNBR, which is a remotely sensed fire severity metric 
and mean torch percent, which is a field measure of the proportion of a tree canopy uh, consumed by fire. So variables shown within this figure were considered important to the models, and the blue bars show the relative contribution of each variable, but do not compare the importance values across um, models, just only within the model. Um, I'll also note that we use relative humidity as our single variable to represent fire weather and um, other variables that were included in the model but were not considered important are shown here on the right. And finally, the model for torch percent was excluded because it was mostly fitting noise. So that's why there's a missing space right there. Um, so first you can see, really important, that pre-fire red phase basal area so our um, pre-fire tree mortality was an important variable for all five of the remaining models. But it usually wasn't the most important variable. On the cedar fire, on the left here, uh, relative humidity was consistently the most important predictor of fire severity. That represents fire weather. On the rough fire, topographic position or the vertical position of uh, the plot along the slope shared the top spot with pre-fire tree mortality. We didn't see an effect of fire weather on the rough fire on the right, you can see, but we had relatively few plots there, um, only 50 as compared to 130 on the cedar fire, and only five plots that burned when RH was above 20%. So our results don't necessarily mean that fire weather wasn't a factor here. We just, we definitely weren't able to detect it in our sample. Um, similarly, we had low variability in topographic position of our plots on the cedar fire, and that is possibly what led to our lack of detecting that slope position as an important contributor to fire severity on that fire. And so as we dig deeper in the interest of time, I'm only going to focus on this first uh, measure of fire severity, which is the percent of basal area killed by fire. So here are the results for that fire severity metric, which is listed here um, on the cedar fire first. Um, we used the variables identified as important in the random forest model shown in that previous slide to conduct a regression tree analysis, which is on the left. We also constructed partial dependence plots for the important variables on the right. So starting with the regression tree, we can see that relative humidity drove the first split of the data. Um, with uh, higher, sorry, low, under low relative humidity, so more, ext um, more extreme fire weather, um, and that corresponded to higher temperatures, um, associated with plots that burned at higher fire severity. But under more mild fire weather, so relative humidity above 20.3, pre-fire tree mortality drove the next split between lower and higher fire severity, as seen here. So in other words, pre-fire tree mortality was more important to fire severity when fire weather was less extreme. And this hierarchical relationship was not observed for the other two metrics of fire severity that I'm not gonna show, but I still think it's an important result because it agrees with several other studies that only detected an influence of pre-fire uh, tree mortality on fire severity when fire weather was moderate and not extreme. And on the right are partial dependence plots, which show the contribution of each predictor variable when all other variables are held constant at their mean. So take note of the y-axis scale, and you can see that as relative humidity increased, the percent of basal area killed by fire or fire severity decreased pretty substantially. Uh, the second panel shows pre-fire red phase basal area, and um, it and then you can see that it's associated with a smaller change in fire severity than relative humidity was. So it's roughly 10% or so increase in fire severity associated with our increases in pre-fire tree mortality. So on the rough fire, the only split of the data identified in the tree was um, pre-fire tree mortality. And remember that the other important variable identified was topographic position. So its lack of appearance in this tree indicates that there isn't a hierarchical relationship between these two important variables. On the right, again, are partial dependence plots and note the different y-axis scale than on the cedar fire. 
And you can see again that the change in fire severity associated with red phase basal area is moderate, uh, about 12%. So before I conclude, I'd like to show you one more thing, which is um, how the tree species composition of the two sites changed after experiencing these two back-to-back -back disturbances. So on these graphs, the blue indicates the percent of total trees that each species made up prior to the drought and insect mortality. And the yellow bars show the percent of each species post-fire. And on the cedar fire here, it was dominated by white fir and incense cedar which are both shade, relatively shade tolerant and fire intolerant species. And you can see that the proportional contribution of each tree species to the total did not change much after both disturbances. And in contrast on the rough fire, which was dominated by ponderosa pine, a shade intolerant and fire tolerant species, um, after, the, after both disturbances, the species composition shifted to being roughly evenly dominated by white fir, incense cedar, and ponderosa pine. So, in conclusion, pre-fire red phase tree mortality was associated with increased wildfire severity across both fires and all three fire severity metrics for the Sierra Nevada mixed conifer forests. Fire weather and topography were also strongly associated with fire severity, as we probably would expect. We did find evidence that pre-fire tree mortality may have a greater influence on fire severity under more moderate weather conditions. While we know this, we only saw this for one fire severity metric on one fire, but I'd like to reiterate that the cedar fire had more plots and was our more robust sample. And this result agrees with several other studies. Uh, so I think this is an area worthy of future study. And I think it also shows the importance of making sure to control for differing weather conditions when evaluating these disturbances. And finally, the interacting disturbances shifted a pine dominated system to a system dominated by pine, fir, and cedar. And in other words, that system has an increased proportion of species that are less well adapted to fire. This also agrees with other research. So thanks very much to Beverly Bulaan for all of her help on this project and to our field crews for their contributions and to Region 5 of the U.S. Forest Service for funding the work. And thank you for listening. <laughs>